ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونستشهد ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كرم المشركون اما بعد ايها الاخوه الكرام يقول ربنا عز وجل في كتابه المبين ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of all that happens in the universe. Thus we praise him and we thank him for his blessings, his mercy, and his grace. We believe in him and put our trust in him. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil inclinations of ourselves and also from the evil of our actions. For whoever chooses guidance, there is none to misguide him. And whoever chooses misguidance, there is none to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. He is one and has no partner. And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and messenger of Allah, whom Allah sent with the religion of truth and with guidance, so that this truth and this guidance will become established in the land over all other religions although the idolaters detest that. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken extensively about justice and also injustice in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined upon us that as we live our lives, we strive for justice. In fact, to the point where Allah orders us that we must stand for what is just and what is right, even if it's against ourselves, or our parents, or our close relatives. That's how important justice is. Because without justice, there is no peace. Without justice, there is no security. There is no comfort. There is no inner satisfaction. Now there, we can talk about justice at, at different levels or from different perspectives. But the one that I would like to share with you today is the issue of the injustice that our sisters, many of our sisters face in their own families, in particular the wives, but even the daughters, and sisters, and sometimes mothers. But mainly the wives, the sisters who are wives face a lot of injustice in the form of all kinds of abuse, physical, verbal, mental, emotional. And this is happening not only in the mainstream society. Don't think that because we're Muslims, it doesn't happen within the Muslim society. Because as human beings, we make choices. This is exactly why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold us accountable for the choices we make. So the fact that we express belief does not automatically guarantee that we are totally protected from ever doing anything that is wrong. It doesn't. We're still humans. And we still make choices every day. And quite often, we make the bad choices. So this is an issue that we need, brothers and sisters, to really deal with. At the very least, all of us, at an individual level, in our own homes, we can take charge of attempting to free our homes 
of injustice and abuse. <clears throat> the Prophet والسلام, whom Allah sent as a role model, his mission was not only to deliver Allah's message to mankind, but he was also obliged to live the message to show us how it is done. This is why his sunnah is so important for us. Because we may differ. We may differ about the understanding or interpretation of certain ayahs of the Quran. But it is the example of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that will clarify for us exactly what these statements mean. So we should never seek to understand the Qur'an without looking at the hadith, without looking at the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because his very life, his character, the way he carried himself, reflected the teachings of the Qur'an. This is what Aisha radiallahu anha meant when she was asked about his khuluq, she replied by saying, "Kana khuluquhul Qur'an." His character was the Qur'an. His behavior exemplified the wonderful principles and values that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala taught us in the Qur'an. So when those brothers who quote the Qur'an in order to justify their abuse of their wives, when they quote such, the, the, this verse in Surah Al-Nisa, they need to also look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ and how he understood this ayah and how he practiced this ayah. What we find is as the Sahaba told us, and they're the people who lived with him, alayhi salatu wasalam, that he never raised a hand to hit anybody, to strike anyone, except in battle, in war. Now unless we are at war with our spouses at home, we should not be raising our hands. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, is described by his companions, may Allah be pleased with them, as having never raised his hands to strike anyone except in war. That's the only time he would raise his hands to strike somebody. <coughs> now he did not live, he did not have a relationship with his wives in which, mashallah, there were absolutely no downs or no problems. There are occasions when he had problems or issues. But how did he deal with these? Did he beat his wives into submission? No, certainly not. One time, and Imam al-Bukhari records this hadith in his Sahih, the Prophet والسلام, got upset with his wives to the point where he decided, he made an oath that for one month he would not go near any one of them. So he came into the masjid and he set up a little tent and he spent a whole month in the masjid. Certainly this was an issue. In fact, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when this news reached him, what he heard was that the Prophet had divorced his wives. So he was concerned. Because his own daughter, Hafsa radiallahu anha, is one of the wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ to find out if this was really so. Only to find out that the Prophet did not divorce his wives, but he was certainly upset with them. The point is, brothers and sisters, sometimes we tend to think that the Prophet ﷺ had, mashallah, this wonderful relationship with all his wives, whereby there were never ever any disagreements or issues between him and his wives. That's not true. The reality is he had issues. So the important question for us, or the important matter for us is, how did he deal with these matters and these issues? Many of us seem to think 
physical abuse or verbal abuse or emotional abuse is the way to get what you want. That's the solution. So we beat them into submission. Or we, we verbally abuse them to the point where the person may begin to feel worthless in this life. But that's not how the Prophet والسلام, dealt with such situations. He did not put down his wives for this one month, but he stayed in the masjid, right next door. In fact, he never insulted anybody. Today, these, these dirty words seem to come out of our mouths faster than anything else. And some of these words, if we hear them, we would feel sick ourselves. But this is the kind of abuse that's happening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered justice, brothers and sisters. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl. Verily, Allah commands justice. No oppression, no injustice, no transgression. He commands justice. Wal-ihsan and kindness. Because sometimes, justice demands that you call it down the middle, as we say. But sometimes, we need to even give a little bit more. So Allah says, well, ihsan. This is what ihsan is. Ihsan is not just kindness, doing kind, good things, but it also means that sometimes you're willing to give up even more of your right for the sake of peace. You're being gracious about it all. Sometimes this is what is needed. Not simply, this is my right and I want it at all costs. Sometimes for the sake of peace, the greater peace, we need to practice ihsan, graciousness. In fact, brothers and sisters, if you look at the ayats in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about divorce, at a time when most couples fight, they're very angry with each other, they blame each other for all the problems. And they're simply out to make life as miserable as possible for the other person. Even at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Do not forget to be gracious among yourselves. Even at the time of divorce, when people might be angry and upset, yet Allah reminds us, even at that time, don't forget to be gracious. So Allah says He commands justice, kindness, ihsan, wa ita idil qurba. And that you give, you donate, you help out your poor relatives. At the same time, He forbids certain things. Wa yanha anil fahsha. He forbids all kinds of lewdness or indecency. Indecency, fahsha. Not only of amal, but of qawm, of, 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 of words. And we need to ask ourselves, so when we get angry and upset, if sometimes we don't say words that are considered indecent. Allah says He forbids all forms of indecency, walmunka, on all things that are objectionable, reprehensible, walbari, and transgression. Because transgression contradicts justice. It is injustice to oppress or to transgress, to go over your limits. يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ He admonishes you, that is us. He admonishes us, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ So that perhaps you may remember, you may benefit from this admonition. So it is time, brothers and sisters, that all of us re-evaluate the relationship we have with our spouses. <coughs> Every husband needs to reevaluate the way in which he deals with his wife. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in talking about marriage in the Qur'an commands the husbands, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Live with your wives on terms that are fair, reasonable, and just. And although this concept works both ways, even the wife is required to be reasonable, fair, and just with her husband. <coughs> so all it works both ways. Yet interestingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically in this ayah in Surah Al-Nisa, addresses the husbands. وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ From the words used in the Arabic language, we know that these words literally address the husbands in regards to their wives. Although the lesson works the other way as well. Live with your wives on terms that are fair, reasonable, and just. Now why do you think, although the lesson works both ways, it's a two-way street, why do we think that Allah the Exalted saying, allow the husbands for special mention. You husbands live with your wives on terms that are reasonable, fair, and just. The answer is, husbands are the ones who usually say that they are in charge. They are the leaders of the household. They have the final say. And quite often, we interpret that to mean we can become dictators and controllers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His infinite knowledge and wisdom, warns us that in as much as, yes, He has selected the husband to be the head of the household, because every group of people needs a leader to provide guidance, direction, and stability for the group. You must have a leader. That's important. And in our own human societies, we see this in, in practice. We have a prime minister for this country. And we have a premier for this province. And we have a mayor for the city of Toronto. Every group of people needs a leader to provide guidance, stability, and direction. That leader is not necessarily the best of the group, or being selected as the leader does not make you superior to the rest of the group. It does not mean that you make unilateral decisions without consultations, but sadly that's exactly how many of us see this. So Allah in His infinite knowledge and wisdom warns us. O oh men, if that's how you feel, that you are the head of the household, and that you have the final say, and you think you can do this and you can do that on your own, Allah says, وَعَشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُ You are still obliged to relate with your wives on terms that are reasonable, fair, and just. Reasonable, fair, and just. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that in most cases, when the husband makes a unilateral decision on his own without ever consulting his wife, in most of these cases, if we were to come down to examining this matter on the basis of what is reasonable, fair, and just, we will recognize that it's not reasonable, it's not fair, and it's not just. So it is time we grow up. It is time, brothers and sisters, that we actually behave like grown-ups. Because a grown-up person, an adult, is supposed to be a responsible individual. And don't forget that the Prophet ﷺ has told us, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ Every one of you is in charge of something. And every one of you will be held accountable and responsible for the things in his care. <clears throat> now I may not be a leader to have people to look after, but at the very least, at the very least, I am responsible for how I deal with other people. And for that, I'm going to be held responsible and accountable. Did I deal with people on the basis that is reasonable, fair, and just? Or the opposite? It is very sad 
that in this day and age, brothers and sisters, with so much of awareness about this issue, that women still are abused in, in huge numbers. And as I said, it's not just the wider uh, non-Muslim community or society that is faced with this problem, even the Muslims. Even the Muslims. And quite often, our brothers justify their abuse by quoting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an. But did Allah ever allow abuse? When Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ Then He says, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَعْدِ These are words that clearly, brothers and sisters, clearly tell us that there is no way God will ever allow abuse. So did God ever allow abuse? Whether it's physical, or verbal, or emotional, or mental. Because abuse is not just physical. Sometimes people say, I have never touched her. But the mental and emotional abuse that the, the sisters put through, sometimes she feels it's better for her to be physically abused than to be mentally abused. Because you torture the mind of the person with verbal and emotional and mental abuse. While with physical abuse, your body is made to feel some pain, and mashallah, the body recuperates. And I'm not justifying physical abuse, mind you. The point is, abuse is not just physical, brothers and sisters, it's also verbal and mental. And when we want to say nasty things to our spouses, and we think it's okay, we should remember the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَعْرِ These terms do not allow for anything that is reprehensible, that is, that is evil, that is vile, that is abominable, to become acceptable. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, as a Muslim records in his Sahih in a Hadith Qudsi, Ya ibadi, inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tazalam. My servants, surely I have made oppression, injustice, transgression, dhulm, that's what dhulm is. I have made it forbidden upon myself, and this is Allah the Creator. الَّذِي لَا يَقَرْهُ شَيْءٍ Whom nothing can subdue. No one, no force in this world can ever force Allah to do something or not to do something. And yet out of His mercy for His creations, He has taken it upon Himself to forbid injustice upon Himself. إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ ظُلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِي وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا and I have also made it forbidden among you. So do not commit injustice upon one another. So it is time, brothers and sisters, that we resolve firmly to eradicate abuse from our homes. It is time we ask ourselves, what I'm doing or what I contemplate doing, is it reasonable? Is it fair? Is it just? Or is it unfair? Is it unreasonable? Is it unjust? We need to ask ourselves. The Prophet والسلام, as a role model for all of us, for all Muslims of mankind, showed us, brothers and sisters, demonstrated to us the miracles of kindness, tolerance, compassion, softness, generosity, graciousness. He has shown us 
the wonderful nature of these qualities. He has shown us the heights of enjoyment and satisfaction a person can achieve and derive by being soft and kind and compassionate, easygoing, gracious, as opposed to being harsh and tough and abusive and abrasive. How do you begin to sacrifice? When does a human being become willing to sacrifice for the sake of another human being? Is it when you see harshness and abrasiveness and insult from a person? Is that what makes you want to give your life for that person? I believe all of us will agree, certainly, those are the qualities that will do the exact opposite. It's the qualities of compassion, of kindness, softness, leniency, graciousness. These are the qualities that will result in a person being willing to make sacrifices for you. So it's not the harshness that our wives see from us that make us man. Sometimes that seems to be the problem. We think we won't be the man if we're not tough with our, with our wives. It is not this toughness and harshness and abrasive nature that will cause them to love us more. Actually, the opposite will happen. And this is our nature as human beings. Anybody who's harsh with us, or abrasive with us, or insulting with us, eventually what happens? We go to dislike and abhor that person. We don't even want to see, as we say, their best bone sometimes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet and all of us, that it is this kindness, this softness, this graciousness, this is what wins over the hearts of people. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ By the mercy of Allah, you were soft and kind with them. And if you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from around you. It was the compassion and the kindness and the graciousness that the people saw in the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, that attracted them to Islam. And the same applies to our relationship with our spouses. Because the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith in the Sahih, I adribu ahadukum imra'atahu darba al fahli, thumma yujamu'aha min akhir al layl. Would any one of you strike his wife as he strikes an animal? Not that striking the animal is allowed, but would any one of you beat his wife as he beats an animal? And then at the end of the day, he wants to be intimate with her. That is going to happen? Do you think that is going to happen? That harshness, intolerance, abrasiveness, the insults, this is what's going to soften up their hearts and bring them and you bring us and them closer together? No. It's kindness, it's tolerance, it's compassion. Being reasonable, being fair, being just. This is what leads to peace and security. This is what leads to happiness, brothers and sisters. So it is time that you and I examine the basis on which we deal with our own wives at home. And I believe truly this is where the change has to start. Not with government legislations. Because the government can legislate as much as it wants. And in this country, there are, mashallah, a lot of legislations. Where even if a person just feels threatened, you can call the police. Yet, abuse is happening. So we need to start from our own homes, each one of us. It has to be a private and individual effort. Each one of us needs to re-examine how we deal with our spouses. And the terms of references were given to us by Allah the Creator. وَعَشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ 
And ma'roof means reasonable, fair and just. Let us always or constantly ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, am I being reasonable here? Am I being fair here? Am I being just here? And I believe we will find the answers. But it is time we resolve in our own ways to begin to eradicate this level of injustice and abuse that happens in our homes and in our families. That's the only way truly we can rid our societies of, uh, of this horrible abuse that's happening uh, uh, in our midst and in our families. If each one of us personally take responsibility and take steps to do so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that not only can we understand this message, but that we would be inspired to live by that message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the, all the temptations and deviations around us. And may He keep us from the straight path. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al-muslimina min kulli dham fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Please, brothers, uh, fill in the gaps, move forward as much as you can, and fill in the, the spaces so that our brothers at the door can find space. And for the brothers at the door, if you don't find space here, there's usually space on the upper level and also in the basement, so you can try those places. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa, wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi al-ladheena s-kafa ba'ad. Let us send peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah, for Allah has commanded us to do so in the Quran when He said, "Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayuha al-ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabih wa tabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen wa anna ma'ahum bimannika wa rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Allahumma a'izza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa adilla shirka wa al-kafarata wa al-mulhidin wa ansur ibadaka al-muwahidin Allahumma ansur ikhwanana al-Muslimin al-mustadafina fi kulli makan Allahumma afrid alayhim sabran wa thabit aqdamahum wa ansurhum ala al-qawm al-kafirin Allahumma aghfir al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat al-Ahyai minhum wa al-Amwat innaka qareebun sami'un mujibu da'awat wa kumu ila salatikum